Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today, Mayor. Hi there. Um, I'd like to open the meeting. It having reached the hour of 11.46 a.m., I am calling the September 27th, 2021 Special City Council Workshop to order. Uh, this meeting is uh, not open, physically open to the public, but we are participating in conformance with governors with the governor's executive order in 2920. So welcome everyone. Does anyone wish to speak on any item under public comment? And this is for items not on the council agenda and you have three minutes to speak. I um, look under panelists, checking under attendees, please raise your hand if you are wanting to speak. I do not see any hands raised. Uh, Felicia, is that correct? Do you see any hands raised? There are currently no hands raised or no messages in the chat box. All right, thank you very much. I will turn it over to Trish. All right, thank you, Mayor. So uh, good afternoon. I'm Trish Christensen, President and CEO of the Modesto Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to our Council Connection webinar. We had initially hoped to be hosting this event in person, so greatly appreciate you attending with us virtually. We tend to be familiar with the council member that represents our individual districts, but we don't necessarily learn much about the others. We thought that by hosting an opportunity to interact with our city council members, we could create a unique opportunity to get to know the people that were elected to lead our great city a little more. In turn, this is a great opportunity for our council members and mayor to share a bit about themselves with us. We hope you enjoy today's panel discussion. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge our sponsors. <clears throat> and I would like to introduce my co-facilitators. John Valines, Chief Operations Officer with Modesto Gospel Mission. He is also currently serving as the chair of the Modesto Chamber of Commerce Government Relations Council. And Michael Gaffney, Government Relations Representative with PG&E. He currently serves as the board chairman for the Modesto Chamber of Commerce as well. John, would you like to introduce our panelists? Yes, thank you, Trish. Uh, thank you all of you who've been able to join us. So uh, uh, I'm just gonna introduce the, the panelists by name and then we will proceed to uh, talk about kind of the concept and what's, what's happening today. So district one is council member uh, Rosa Scutia Brayton. District two is council member Tony Madrigal. District three, council member Chris Rickey. District four is council member Bill Zalaki, who could not be here today. Uh, he was uh, scheduled to be here, but unfortunately something came up at the last minute. District five is council member Jenny Knoyer. And District 6 is Council Member David Wright. And last but not least, certainly, is Mayor Zuzwellen. Thank you. And Michael, would you please give us an overview? Yes, thank you, Trish. Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to explain the ground rules for this discussion. Uh, each participant will answer a series of seven questions. Each question will be answered in the order of their district skipping over district four since council member Zaslowski was able to join us today and ending with our mayor. In the interest of time, we ask that you keep each response to a minute or less and there will not be Q and A at the end. I'll turn it back over to you, Trish. Thank you. So yeah. Mayor Zwallen, the first two are for you. Could you please define the role responsibility of city council and share why city council is important? Sure, happy to be here today. Thank you so much for organizing this and for inviting us to participate. So the mayor and city council members are the policy makers for the city. We are the ones who set the direction for where Modesto is going in the future and the parameters for how we are going to get there. It's our job to be constantly taking the pulse of the residents, businesses, and community groups in order to set these priorities and goals and establish a plan for how to achieve them. 
A city council is extremely important. We wouldn't be here if we didn't think that it was. And without a governing body like the mayor and the city council, city government would be operating with no input from the public uh, because elected officials need to be approved by voters. They must by nature be responsive to public input. The challenge is in balancing what the public says it wants with what may be necessary for the long-term health of the city, but isn't always popular. So that is the challenge that we have and all of us are ready to take it on and uh, are excited to be here today with you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, John, could you please get us started? Yeah, so question one and, and uh, the, the panelists will uh, answer in order of their district. So the first question to council member uh, Rosa Escudia Brayton, please summarize your background and experience. Sure. Um, well, first of all, let me say thank you Modesto Chamber of Commerce for this opportunity. It's always a great uh, conversation when um, we as city council members get to, um, get to know, get to have our citizens, our citizenry get to know us a little bit better. So thank you for creating that opportunity. Um, um, work and experience, I have over um, 25 years of, of public policy experience um, in both public and private sector, um, mainly in, in the area of government, public and community relations, as well as workforce development experience. Um, also have experience in the protection and in investigation of civil rights, including um, being a certified mediator. And these are all um, ex work experience that I've been able to apply in my capacity as city council um, work and um, bring to the work that the, that the council does. Um, I live here in Modesto, obviously with my husband raising two children, uh, three children, two living with us, um, uh, two boys and a girl. Thank you. All right, council member Tony Madrigal, same question. Please summarize your background and experience. Uh, Councilman, you are on mute still. Oh, sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, just wanted to give a time check to everybody. Uh, let you know I'm, I'm on lunch break. So if I have to break away, it might be at any moment. But I thank you for the opportunity, uh, Trish, and everybody at the chamber. I know you guys all worked hard to put this on to give us a chance to have the community get to know us a little better and share yeah. some of ourselves. Uh, my name is Tony Madrigal. I uh, was born in Turlock. I grew up as a farm worker all my life here in the uh, Central Valley. And uh, I went to Houston High School, graduated from Houston High School, uh, went to Modesto Junior College. Um, that's where I was bitten by the political bug, as they say. I was student body president. Uh, I went to UC Santa Cruz. I got my BA in economics. Um, I was a city council member in my college town for two terms. I moved back so I could be closer to my mom because she was getting ready to retire. And my siblings said it was my turn to kind of be close and keep help keep an eye on mom. And um, I found a cheap place to live in West Modesto which I had never been in an urban environment really before. And um, I got frustrated with the crime. And so I ran for council. And my whole goal was to try to have more police patrolling and whatnot. And I'm, um, I'm proud of the progress we've made so far in trying to increase resources for our law enforcement and public safety. My focus has always been jobs, safety, and community. And um, I'm getting close to the end of my second term. We term out November of next year. And... I'll leave it there. Was that pretty concise? Yep. Thank you, sir. Right on. I have my moments, you know, sometimes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Next, we have council member Chris Rickey. How do I follow that, Tony? How do I follow <laughs> that? Uh, well, I, I grew up on the peninsula, um, just south of uh, Stanford University. Um, after high school, I attended University of San Diego. I graduated in 1995 with a bachelor's in uh, history and a minor in business. 
Um, started off in the entertainment business. I worked in LA and Sacramento. Um, and then I moved to Modesto to start my own company here in 1999. Um, and I think like most of us on this call, I've kind of been here ever since. Um, I got married here, had three kids here, bought a house here, um, served on lots of boards from Education Foundation, Boys and Girls Club, Modesto Rotary, Towns and Opera Players, Prospect Theater, and even, uh, believe it or not, the Modesto Chamber of Commerce. Um, my company produced events and did marketing. Um, it feels kind of weird to use the past tense, but COVID kind of put my events company out of business basically. So career-wise, um, like many people here in Modesto, I found myself really at a crossroads, you know? So um, I was fortunate to find a new job in marketing um, and change is sometimes pretty good. So, so now in addition to my council stuff, I do uh, digital marketing for political causes across the country and I'm pleased to serve district three. Thank you. Next, we go to uh, same question to Council Member Ginny Knoyer. Uh, good morning. And um, like everyone, I want to thank the Chamber for this opportunity. Um, I was born in um, Patterson, California, literally, and moved to Modesto when I was five. Um, I was a registered nurse for 48 years, uh, but became interested basically in um, the fact that there was lacking transportation mm. for people with disabilities and people who were confined at home. So that's kind of how I got involved in the political arena, never expecting to uh, run for office. Uh, I am like Tony, I am uh, at the end of my second uh, tour, uh, four years, uh, it has been very interesting. Uh, I have met a lot of wonderful people. I'm honored to uh, serve uh, the constituents, not just in my district, in, but in the city. And I've tried to expand myself so that I am aware of what's going on in every district. So thank you for this opportunity. And um, I've enjoyed uh, my time on the council and look forward to uh, finishing next year. Thank you, Jenny. And now council member David Wright, same question. Thank you, John. Thank you, uh, Modesto um, Chamber of Commerce for taking this opportunity to let us speak today. Um, I actually was born in Long Beach, California, uh, moved to Salinas, California when I was about four years old, grew up in Salinas in the Alisal area, which was a uh, low income area, a lot of uh, farm workers. And um, uh, I did work in uh, lettuce fields for a summer and realized uh, um, how rewarding that could be and also um, helped me make some decisions on what I want to do in life. Uh, our family moved over here in 1970. Uh, right after that, I uh, was uh, joined the Army Reserves and spent six years in the Army Reserves and then uh, lived down in Southern California. And we moved back here in 19, or excuse me, 36 years ago and opened up a insurance brokerage here in Modesto and uh, been a business owner ever since. Um, I've served on five different committees with the city in the last 10 years which gave me a lot of insight on how the city operates and really um, gave me some good um, information on uh, how to work uh, in the city uh, government and uh, help um, make this a better city. Thank you. And then Mayor Zwellen, please summarize your background and experience. All right, thank you. This has been fun to listen to my uh, fellow council members to hear a little bit about them and learn more about them. Uh, I was born and raised in Modesto and attended Davis High, uh, where I met my husband and together we built his dental business and raised six children here. Uh, they are all adults. We now have 10 grandchildren with one more on the way in October. 
Uh, right out of high school, I attended nursing school and I've been a registered nurse for uh, over 46 years. And most of that was spent in the emergency room at Doctors uh, Medical Center. That's where I saw firsthand the vital needs of the people living in our community. I was able to take care of them one by one. So after having spent uh, years as a volunteer in my children's schools for decades, uh, I was elected to two terms on the Modesto City Schools Board of Education, uh, where we navigated a $350 million budget, over 4,000 employees, and 34 school sites. So in addition to that, also navigating the complexities of the California education codes. So I got some really good experience there uh, for this job. I have spent decades volunteering in the community on issues like homelessness, fighting poverty, and promoting a greater appreciation for the ethnic and religious diversity of our community. In 2020, I ran a very hotly contested campaign for mayor uh, where I ended up being the top vote getter and I went on to win the runoff for mayor in February of this year. So that's it for me. Okay, so we will move on to the next question, which is what inspired you to run for Modesto City Council? And we will start with Council Member Rocha Scucha Broughton in District 1. Sure, I thought we were rotating the questions. <laughs> so, but I'd be glad to go give the first shot here. Um, being a council member and serving in any elected office, uh, one has to have a desire to serve. And I'm no different. I have had a servant's heart almost my whole life. And um, I've always wanted to be involved in the community I lived with. And having government as a, a professional background, for me, it, 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 it made sense. It was a, it was a, uh, a natural transition. Um, living in Modesto, I wanted to be involved when I first moved here. I, I, and I did in the capacity of um, cultural commission. I was the commissioner there and then I went on to serve on the um, planning commission for seven years. And um, when the opportunity to step up for council came up, it made sense for me. I felt that I brought many positive attributes to the table and, and attributes and experience that could add value to the work of the council. So that's really what motivated me to work. It was just a fusion and uh, a fusion of things that made sense at the, at the right time. And um, I'm having a lot of fun doing really good work with my colleagues and the mayor for the benefit of Modesto. Thank you so much. Councilman Madrigal, what inspired you to run for Modesto City Council? Um, so I'll try to be brief um, and I'm gonna try to cram all six questions into one minute here. Cause I think I have to get back to work. I'm terribly <laughs> sorry. Um, I was inspired by just the crime that I saw in my neighborhood and and uh, in West Modesto, uh, you know, some people call it, you know, the hood. Uh, I think the thing I appreciate most about Modesto is um, the community, the people, the sense of pride that we have here. Um, Modesto does not give up. And, and I love that about us. Um, I think that probably the unique thing, a special thing I would say about my district is definitely the diversity um diversity i think everybody would probably say the you know the the neighborhoods but the diversity in my in is very unique in my district i believe and and also we we do have some of the uh um i think the most county pockets or county islands uh concentration of county islands in my district i believe my my most important area of focus for my district is what I've always focused on, which is jobs, safety, and community. I think the thing I enjoy most about being a council member is my ability to try to get a quicker response for the uh, people that have a problem in their area, where whether it's a pothole or a broken sidewalk or a tree that just, you know, fell on their roof. And I don't know if there's anything interesting I can say about me. Um, I get really excited about getting things done, like getting work done. Um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a horrible karaoke singer, but somehow I, I really like it. And um, that's about it. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your work day. Uh, we will move on to, you can advance the slide, Councilmember Chris Rickey. Uh, yeah, um, what inspired me, I think, you know, being an entrepreneur in Modesto um, that did events, I had, you know, a lot of struggles um, with city government. You know, I kind of felt like uh, a lot of times the government was its own worst enemy. Um, and so with that experience, I really thought that I could make a difference and make it better. Um, you know, what I really want is to help inspire the city um, to take advantage of its biggest strength, which is its people and its culture. Um, and I want our community to become uh, a model that others look at and we can do that, you know. Um, and I'm just, I'm kind of blown away by the progress that we've made so far um, of this council and just by the dedication of city staff. Uh, I think we're heading in the right direction. Great, thank you. Uh, council member Jenny Knoyer, what inspired you to run for Modesto City Council? Well, I like I said, it all started back when I became involved or concerned about mainly about uh, the transportation for the elderly that were stuck that could not leave their house and, and the disabled. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, and then the the more I went to meetings, uh, the more I realized that you can't just complain about what's going on if you want to really uh, see progress, you have to be part of it. Mm -hmm. And even though there was a time when I wasn't sure if I qualified as um, a council person, I realize now after eight years that it just takes someone with a heart mm -hmm. for the city with a concern and compassion for all walks, uh, people of all walks of life in Modesto. The ones that have, uh, that live in the streets, uh, the people who are having difficulty with their neighbors um, or the trees or anything that concerns them. And I find that it's really important to have an open ear, to listen to them, and to try and do your best to help them, but always letting them know that there's that possibility that you can't. So anyhow, I, I just was inspired as, as an individual wanting to participate and feeling like I was, I had that sympathetic ear and I had the time that it takes because it takes a lot of time to be a council person and I've really enjoyed it and I'm not at least a bit sorry that I ran. Thank you so much. Uh, council member David Wright, what inspired you to run from the State Council? Thank you, Mike. Yeah, you know, having a business down on McHenry uh, for the past several years, I've seen the problems we've had with the homeless community um, setting up camp in, in our facilities and just uh, the issues we have going on there. And I, I wanted to get involved in order to, you know, see what we could do to make it a, a, this a better city, uh, give a hand up, not a handout for the homeless. I know Chris Rickey, that's one of his passion. And uh, I am glad we have a, a council person like uh, Chris and the other council members that are, you know, really wanting to, uh, you know, see what we can do to, uh, help our uh, homeless community. Also, too, in when I ran, um, you know, Modesto has a, a $450 million budget. The city council controls about $157 million of that. And uh, the other candidates um, uh, had really no business experience. Uh, they were great uh, young people. Uh, but when you're operating uh, a city with a uh, 500, close to a $500 million budget, uh, I think it's important to have people on our council that have some experience on running a business and know what the um, um, it takes to run a business. So that was one of the reasons, or the main reasons why I jumped into the race. Thank you very much, sir. 
Uh, and lastly, um, Mayor Wallen, what inspired you to run for Mayor of Modesto? First of all, I love the word inspired. First of all, I love the word because I feel like that um, is really precisely what happened. Uh, at the time, I, I realized that cities are really experiencing so many significant challenges, uh, especially in recent years, and Modesto is truly no exception. Uh, I love this city, as I can tell all of our council members do, and do remember fondly what it was like to grow up here uh, in Modesto. Certainly, Jenny has that experience, and, and I do too. Um, so when it came time to elect another mayor, I, I just felt like my, uh, my unique experience, each person has their unique experience, but mine is as a mother, and as a nurse, particularly in the midst of a worldwide health crisis that we are currently still in, and as a business partner with my husband and also a school board member, uh, and combining all of that with my deep love for the city, I felt like I, was, I should do it. So I made that decision. Um, I've also formed many, many relationships over the years, and hopefully all of this is qualified me to do the best job that I can and has given me a good chance at being successful. I, along with all of my council members, are working very, very diligently to make that happen. So that's what I bring to the table and uh, we're all making, working hard to make it work. Thank you, Mayor. So we're gonna go on to question three. Um, we're gonna start with council member Astucia Bratton as well. Um, you just lined up first in district one. <laughs> uh, what do you appreciate most about Modesto? Actually, of all your questions, I, that hands down is the easiest one. And that is it's people and it's heart for community. And that sounds pretty simple, but um, the city that I previously resided in was very different. It, it was very government driven. It was very corporate driven. So when I moved to Modesto over 10 years ago, that's immediately what I noticed. And that was the core quality of its people and its center around community, community spirit, community engagement. And that was different for me because, um, it, I, but I, I, I liked it and it was just different. Um, so, so um, I, people stand up for each other. They know each other, they work together. Um, and it's, it's, it's not different today than it was at the beginning. What made Modesto are um, settlers that came in and built homes and built businesses and helped Modesto grow. And to this day, that's the beauty of our community. We still have strong entrepreneurs that want to invest in Modesto, grow Modesto into the best it can be. So being part of that is fantastic. And being part of it as a community member is great, but also now being part of helping that grow in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in just a, as a council member, it's just a, it's an honor and I'm just excited to be part of the framework and part of that solution. So again, hands down, what I love most about Modesto are its people and I hope that never changes. Thank you. Council member Madrigal, are you going to, are you still with us? we're called. So we will go to Council Member Ricky. What do you appreciate most about Modesto, sir? Yeah, I really want to echo Rosa's sentiments here. Um, it was I, when I said, you know, earlier that, you know, once you end up in Modesto, you kind of stay here. It's because of the relationships and it's because of how we people treat each other here. And I think that that's true of anyone who's on this call. You know, Modesto is a city of relationships. I love the fact that I can go to any restaurant pretty much in town and see a handful of friends to catch up with. Um, and we're the kind of community that's like truly a melting pot. You know, I was at Grisado Park um, this weekend. My wife and I brought our three-year-old out there. Um, and I was just blown away by, by what I saw there. You know, I saw the future of Modesto. It was children of all shapes, sizes, colors playing together. And it was just it was just incredibly bright. And so 
I think Modesto is sitting on a gold mine and that gold mine is its people. Fantastic. Council member Kanoyer, what do you appreciate most about Modesto? Stuff for it, I unmute so that people can hear. Uh, it's, you know, when you listen, when you listen to the two previous council uh, members speaking, and I think that they actually um, express what us on the council field, but as having been here all my life, practically, except for the first five years, what I appreciate a lot about this town is that it is a large city, but it is still has that small city mentality because you, you meet friends no matter where you go. It seems like you, there's something that connects people that they don't even realize. And even though uh, you live on different parts of the town, uh, you seem to have things in common. And, and I think it's, it's what I think uh, Councilmember Ritchie said, it's the camaraderie, it's the friends, it's the people that you, you keep for friends for your whole life. Uh, and I think what I appreciate most about Modesto is the fact that even though we have grown to be a very medium large city, we still have not lost the feeling of hometown, know your neighbor, help one another. I think that's the thing I appreciate most about Modesto. Thank you. And council member Wright, what do you appreciate most about Modesto? You know, a lot of times we forget how great of a city we lived in. Uh, live in. Uh, yesterday, I had to go to uh, Berkeley, California uh, for some business. And uh, once I got into Berkeley, um, um, it was depressing, very depressing. And you, it makes you just realize how great of a city we have. Uh, there was homeless on every block, uh, camp set up all throughout the city. Um, and it was just a sad scene. So what's nice about Modesto that I really like is we got a Graffiti Month, we got the Gallo Center, you know, we're, we're centrally located here in uh, Modesto that you can get up in the morning, go to Yosemite for the day and come home. You can get up in the morning, go to Napa for the day and come home. You can go up to Plymouth, you can go to Monterey. So it's a great location. And we have a lot of friends and families that, you know, come to Modesto to visit us and there's a lot of great things to do around Modesto and also here in Modesto. And that's uh, one thing that I'm looking forward to in the future uh, to have more things here in Modesto, like the graffiti museum um, that's getting ready to open and, and hopefully maybe a, a new uh, ballpark uh, down the road with a uh, professional soccer team here. And uh, so a lot of great things happening here in Modesto. And um, I'm just glad I live here. I'm glad my family's here. And I don't, I don't think there's any other place I would rather be than in the best one. That's wonderful, thank you. And Mayor Wallen, what do you appreciate most about Modesto? Well, um, many, many, many things, but above all, uh, I will say the same thing that everyone else has said, it's our people. And uh, one of the most engaging and inspiring parts of this job is that every day I interact with people who put in so much of their own time and talent to make our city better. And that is a steady stream of council members that are here putting in the time, staff members who are working diligently every minute of every day to improve our city, and so many people in the public who make appointment after appointment after appointment, full days, all week of people that wanna do everything they can to improve our city. I really admire them. Uh, they use their own time and talent, volunteering time in most cases, to improve our city. Uh, I always say that Modesto residents are generally hardworking, kind, welcoming, and down to earth. And I use the term salt of the earth people. 
that's just the best way that I can describe uh, the people in our city. And one of the perks of this job, I'm, I'll invite anyone that's on this call to come visit me here, but I have the most incredible view of the entire valley, but our city with the, the Grange Company and the church steeples and the trees covering the city. It is so incredibly beautiful. And I look out every day and I'm just reminded that it's such an honor for me to be able to represent everyone in the city. And I'm so grateful for it each and every day, but really mostly grateful for uh, the members of our community who give and give and give, whether it's arts, church, volunteerism, feeding the poor and needy, whatever it is, it's just goodness all around. And, and I'm just grateful to be a part of it. Thank you. All right, with that, we're gonna dig down a little bit on that question. Uh, what is unique or special about your particular district? And so council member Escuchia Brayton, you're first. Great, great, great. Um, what's unique and special about District 1 um, is its uh, strong yet diverse economic uh, landscape. It's one of the only districts that I mean, has huge employers, the Costco, the mall, Kaiser. Um, uh, so all those big employers have great employment opportunities to support our workforce here in Modesto, but it also has a big um it touches the, the 99 corridor, which creates a lot of um, economic vitality opportunity for that side of Modesto. So those are what are unique to that side and uh, looking forward to uh, what that all brings to the table for Modesto. Um, and glad that I, that's, that's my part of town. So yeah, that's what I feel is, is unique about District 1. Of course, it's beautiful people. <laughs> but uh, uh, indeed, it's 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 strong and diverse uh, economic landscape. Love it. Thank you. Um, if Tony's still on the call, I believe he already answered this. Um, so we will move on to Council Member Chris Rickey. Yeah, District 3, pretty unique, awesome neighborhood. Um, we've got Modesto Junior College, both campuses. Uh, we got McHenry Village, we got Crusader Park and all the concerts in the park. Uh, we're kind of, we're home to amazing trees, fantastic architecture, great neighbors. Um, it's just a neat place and I'm proud to represent. Thank you. Council Member Jenny Knoyer, what's unique or special about your district? Well, it's interesting to listen um, to um, uh, the other council members because you don't really think about how your district uh, is, uh, what comprises your district and listening to uh, uh, Excuse me, Brayton talking about, and I didn't realize until just now, yeah, she does have a lot of uh, big, you know, Kaiser and and Costco and and a lot a lot of uh, that type of uh, businesses in her district. And then you listen to uh, Councilmember Rishki, and he has a um, uh, a not you know he has a lot of uh, things for the people for younger people to do. Um, and then I look at my district. And it's really interesting because there's a lot of retired people in my district. Uh, there's, uh, there's at least five senior mm -hmm. mobile homes um, in my district. And, and in a lot of the area are uh, older homes and people have lived in them and still live, the, live in them. So it's interesting for me to, to um, listen and realize the uniqueness of each district. Uh, I would have liked to have listened to Tony's. I think um, the one thing that he would have said is the um, number of um, uh, islands that are in his district. That That's what's really unique to his. But anyhow, um, 
I, I find it really interesting and I'm learning about the uniqueness, not of just my district, but of the other districts. Thank you, council member Wright. Next, same question. Well, we, you know, we have some of the best looking streets in, in our district and uh, it, it's really um, turned out to be a, a, a district with few problems. Um, but we do have, um, uh, we do have the soccer complex here off of Sylvan, which is a great uh, asset to our city and also to our district. Uh, we have the new Saymart, uh, which uh, the robots are all throughout the district. And uh, you have to be careful when you're uh, driving that um, if you see a robot crossing um, the street, you just need to slow down or it'll back up and get out of your way. Uh, so I think the robots is probably one of the most unique uh, um, uh, part of our district. And I think uh, if my figures are right. I think they've made over 15,000 deliveries in a quarter uh, with the 35 robots they have throughout uh, the area. And it's amazing when I um, drive through the district, I always see, you know, two or three robots uh, parked at a park and um, they're just sitting there. And uh, when I call say Mark to find, you know, make sure they haven't been abandoned or something, they say, no, they're, they're there and they come home late at night. So um, it's, uh, we have a unique uh, district over there. David, your district with the counts, with the um, soccer field is just such a value to the city of Modesto. I was there this weekend because my five-year-old son had a soccer game and there was several hundred little five-year-olds running around playing soccer and hundreds of families cheering them on. And it was an amazing community gathering. And it was all in your district, and it was so cool. So that is yeah, just such a hidden gem at Modesto. The best in the city. Uh, one of the some of the complaints I get from my uh, people in my district is that they're they they want to be able to only use the parks themselves and not let other uh, people from throughout the city. Uh, we have get a lot of different people throughout the city and, and out of the area that come and use our parks. So uh, we we've got some great assets on our part of town. Good job. All right, and I, I guess uh, mayor is kind of the same question, but uh, what's unique or special about the city of Modesto, I guess that you maybe didn't cover the last question. All righty, happy to tackle this. And I love hearing about, I love hear, live hearing each council member talk about their district. What's it made me kind of laugh because mentioning uh, the complex, Grogan complex, uh, I attend soccer games there every week with my grandson and last Saturday when we were there, I told him, I said, this is sitting here is a lesson in patience because my grandson's father is my 40 year old son. And I said, I remember these discussions when you were five years old about how this is going to be built and developed. And here we are. So this is a lesson in patience and working really hard to make something happen in our city. So I thought that's a great example. I was glad to hear some discussions surrounding that. And it is fabulous to go out there and see that. Um, I wished it had been there for my six children, but at least I get to enjoy it now with our grandchildren. So um, the response that I thought of to this is that um, we really are blessed with the great location. And as was mentioned prior, I can look out my window here to see 99 and the cars, I can always watch how the traffic is going. But we are in the midst of a state uh, major, major transportation route. And that is key, of course, to our economic development. But we have the coast to our west and we have the Sierra Nevadas to our east. So like, location is, I think, a, a, an important um, factor uh, surrounding the city of Modesto. And we have our beautiful valley in between these the coastal range and the Sierra Nevadas. And it's just great to be a part of that. Uh, but the question, I love the word unique. What is unique? And I wanna tell just a very brief story. I am a part of the clergy council that Darius Crosby started. And uh, we meet out at the um, King Kennedy Center. And uh, last week I was there and it's, a, it's several members of the clergy in our community with probation, the district attorney, the highway patrol, our sheriff, police chief, 
and we all we all meet together to discuss and collaborate and just uh, establish relationships one with another. And one person, when we were they were going around the room asking each person to give their report, one person said that he he said he had worked all over the United States um, in law enforcement and in many, many different counties. And the words that came out of his mouth, he said, this place is unique. He said, there is something very different here and very special with the people and the relationships that we have. So uh, he used that term unique and that was in this question. And I thought there again, it speaks to the people and the quality of people that we have here that are trying to improve things. And I thought for him to say that after serving throughout the country that we really do have something unique here. Um, I just wanted to share that with all of you today. So that's my thoughts on that. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, John. Uh, we'll move on to question number five, which is um, important uh, and will pique most folks' interest, I think, uh, so no pressure. What is the most important area or areas of focus in your district? We'll start with District 1, Council Member Rotten. Um, what, uh, what's important um, to focus on my district, um, no different than other districts. Uh, it, for me, it's, it's public safety. We need to ensure that Modesto is a, uh, a, a safe and great place to live and work, for sure. But also we need to address, um, um, the, uh, address the, or if not eliminate completely, blight. We need to ensure that blight is kept to a minimal and that our city is, um, looks lovely and is a safe place and just a, a place where people want to be in. And also having affordable housing, that is critical that we maintain and improve in that area, uh, as well as uh, as well as well uh, having a smart growth, really being thoughtful of how our community is gonna look and feel in years to come. So those are areas that are important to my district and important to Modesto. Thank you. District three, what's the most important area of focus there, uh, Councilman Ricky? Uh, based on calls from my constituents and uh, and messages I get through all our social media platforms. Um, there are really two main areas of concern. The first is trees. Um, I probably get three asks a day from homeowner, homeowners regarding tree-related problems. Um, and I don't think this really should surprise anybody. I mean, the forestry division was defunded by the city nearly 15 years ago. Um, and what that choice did was basically create a tsunami of tree-related disasters. Um, and it's gotten so bad that the city's spending hundreds of thousands of dollars just on tree damage to people's property. Um, fortunately, we've started to see some progress with additional spending this year and more planned for next year. Um, sadly, even with all this funding, um, we're only gonna be able to make incremental improvements. And so it's gonna be one of my major goals to ensure that forestry is budget appropriately um, in the future. Um, because ultimately that's the biggest problem with it is it just wasn't budgeted appropriately and yet we have the responsibility to take care of our urban forest. So we have to take that responsibility, fulfill it, and uh, fulfill the obligation we have to our residents and homeowners. Um, the second biggest call I get is homelessness. Um, and don't get me wrong, the city's done some really good things in the homeless realm, um, especially the Camp to Home program, uh, the Downtown Streets team, which is seeing, it's just really helping people. I mean, if you see some of the stories that we're just, we're changing people's lives and it's really, it's inspiring and wonderful. Um, and then like with the Kansas House, which provides uh, transitional housing, just really, it's really, really working. Um, but also we're not, we're just not doing everything we need to do. Um, our strategy just isn't complete. And as a result of some choices we made, such as closing the Moe's um, Camping Center, the parks in my district, um, and especially in Bill and Tony's districts have kind of become essentially daycare centers for the homeless um, because they're the only safe place they can go. And that's our fault as a city. Um, we made that choice and that's our responsibility. So I think we also need to fix it. I think we can do that. Um, by getting some park rangers in the parks 
and then working with the sheriff to get safe parking set up and safe camping set up, not only in Modesto, but across the county. Thank you, sir, for your transparency there. Um, Council member Jenny Knoyer, what is the most important areas of focus in District 5? Well, like um, so many parts, it's a blight, uh, but it's improving since we're extending the Virginia quarter. Uh, it, you know, there that since that's being used and and more people friendly, um, that 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 blight is decreasing and. And on McHenry, there is, uh, people are concerned about uh, the number of people who are experiencing homelessness. And the majority of the ones that are there now are the people who have uh, mental and, um, and also addictive uh, problems. And this is something that the city and the county have to work on. Um, we need to have a place, there needs to be a place where they can go for long-term rehabilitation, not just 72 hours, that's not gonna work. Um, I, and I think that the problem is, is there is room in the Salvation Army for more people to stay. Uh, we, even in the low barrier, you don't have to be a couple. Uh, you just have to qualify for pets, partners and possessions. You can just have two of those. I, I believe that we need to, not the police, but they need to in, encourage and enforce the fact that there is a place for them to stay, that they don't have to be in the park, that there is a uh, room for them. And I think we need to work on that uh, a little bit to they get comfortable in their environment. Uh, there, but there is places for them to go and that they can receive help. I think that's probably one of the biggest uh, problems because of on McHenry. Otherwise, in my district itself, uh, we don't have a lot of um, uh, that. We don't see the homeless in our district. We just see it on McHenry. Thank you, Ms. Knoyer. Moving on to uh, Councilman Wright, District 6. My district is really unique because we're sort of a city all by ourselves in, in a big city. Um, I think my my number one um, email I get is on mosquitoes. And uh, so we've had a, uh, a, a real issue with our mosquitoes in the area. I've reached out to the East Side uh, Mosquito Abatement uh, District. Uh, they're working hard to try to um, um, help on the issue. We, we have a new species a mosquito that's come up from Southern California, which is uh, causing a lot of havoc uh, in the area. The affordable housing is another issue that we have. Um, uh, there's a lot of um, people that are living with family right now trying to find a house to buy. And, and that's an issue that we're as a council working on to move forward. And hopefully in the next uh, year, we'll see some um, houses coming online and that are already starting to be built and to help uh, relieve that issue. And I think one of the other areas is just um, we need to do a better job as a council to communicate to our districts on what we're really doing and what's going on. It's, it surprises me a lot to um, hear from people that really have no clue uh, what uh, the county and the city is doing on the homeless situation and how uh, we've really made a big impact in that area. And once I tell them what uh, we've been doing and what the county's been doing, uh, they're really uh, surprised. They didn't realize that uh, we have moving forward like we have on those issues. So uh, I think um, 
we need to do a better job as a council and as a city of, of getting that information out. And, and my hats are off to the city staff, city manager with his blog and uh, all the information goes out on social media is, is doing a great job on, on helping try to um, move that information out to our different districts. Thank you, sir. And uh, Mayor Zwollen, what is the most important area of focus in our city? Okay, all righty. So it's it's impossible really to pick just one because we are at a time uh, where so many crises are happening at one time. And as an elected official, I really have no choice but to multitask and deal with many things at one time. So it's certainly not just one, but I will try to outline my priorities in a concise a manner. So I started out with dealing with the ongoing COVID health crisis and trying to keep people safe. I have made that a priority and I will continue to do so. Uh, that is a worldwide health crisis that we're in. Uh, next, I'll mention rebuilding our economy. And that's not just to undo the damage from the pandemic, but to set us up for greater lasting prosperity in the future. And my primary focus there will always be uh, on the youth of our community and in our community. And we will, there will be more to come regarding that. But I believe if we are a child-centric and family-centric city, we will be safer and um, everything will, will be focused on them and they are our future. So the next area would be tackling the housing crisis and that's both, um, well, not just both, but to from the from the continuum of housing the houseless, and to also increase our ability to provide homes for people of every economic level and age bracket. So, I mean, we could spend a day <laughs> speaking about that that topic, uh, but that's certainly uh, a challenge and a priority. Next would be about improving relations between the police and all all of our neighborhoods and ethnic groups and ensuring that law enforcement has the resources that they need to protect the public and that they are held accountable also for their actions in regards to the public. That has been a local crisis here and uh, what we probably hear most about at our city council meetings. And I'm acutely aware of the need to um, keep on, on top of that and do what we can to improve those relationships always. Finally, uh, I would say my overarching goals uh, and um, area of focus is to promote accountability, cooperation, and collaboration, but I might emphasize accountability on our council, but also between city government and the many groups and individuals that are working to solve our problems. And they, that, is, that is key. And we're all working to build a better future, but I think that accountability piece is, has been important to me as an individual. I went to nursing school right out of high school and learned very early on how important it is to be accountable for our actions and what we say and what we do and how we treat others. And it continued on in raising my children. I expected them to be accountable and to do what they could to improve uh, our family, uh, their schools, and our community. And I conti have continued on with that in my life. And that is what I feel very strongly about on our council, that we be account accountable, civil, respectful, and responsible. And I am so gratified by the work that, er the effort that everyone is putting into that to make that happen. That's it for me. I could talk for hours on this, but I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, we're going to move on to question six, um, and we will again start with council member Escusha Bratton. What do you enjoy most about being a council member? Um, <clears throat> just getting um, to meet um, new and interesting people, getting to meet um, constituents and having them know me and get to know how I think. Um, but then also just uh, doing uh, the work of the council and having 
having it be fruitful for Modesto. It is so awesome when something is brought to our table and through council workshop, we're able to have a, um, have a, uh, a consensus on a subject that ultimately helps Modesto. And we're doing a lot of that. <laughs> so it's, it's just, again, meeting the people and um, coming up with um, just solutions that ultimately help Modesto. Thank you. And council member Ricky, what do you enjoy most about being a council member? Um, I think I enjoy my colleagues the most. Um, I enjoy learning and kind of hearing other people's perspectives. I enjoy being right and I enjoy being wrong pretty much every day. Um, so it's, it's been really satisfying to see, you know, good ideas become reality. And then sometimes it's frustrating to see good ideas not happen. So, but I think like probably the, the best thing is that, you know, there are new issues to work on every day and new possibilities for our community all the time and a ton of like-minded people that all want the same thing, which is to make the city be the best it can be. Thank you. Council member Kanoyer, what do you enjoy most about being a council member? You're muted still. No, I'm, I'm mutant. Um, I think, well, I know the thing that I enjoy most is the number of people I've met uh, in my district, in the community, um, not just in the, the it, people from uh, elected from other cities and in the state. Uh, and knowing that with the proper thought that I have, that we as a council have made some very good decisions and that we're, I, I really appreciate the council because we, we are individuals yet we work together so well and what we want most is best, what's best for Modesto. And I think the eight years, I've just really enjoyed the people I've met and also seeing some of the decisions we've made as council make such an improvement in the city of Modesto. So I've really enjoyed being a council uh, member. Uh, I've, I think I've had so many more good times than there were bad times. So I've really, really have enjoyed uh, being on the city council. Thank you. And council member Wright, what do you enjoy most about being a council member? <clears throat> well, you know, a, a great council is led by a great mayor. And I think we have uh, probably the best mayor that we could have. Um, that's really directing this council that uh, listens to all of us. And also we have a great uh, city manager. Uh, that's uh, him and his staff is doing a great job on, on working with the mayor and with the rest of the council. And then also too, you know, we got great council members. You know, I can pick up the phone and call Chris at any time and call Rosa. I can call Jenny, I can call Cody. Um, you know, we might not agree on everything and uh, I might have one opinion, but when I get done talking to them, I have a different opinion and uh, which is really great. And um, it's just it's just enjoyable working with people that want to see the city move forward and become a place where people want to come spend their money. And um, that's um, that's just my hats off to all my fellow council members and also the mayor. And then also we have a lot of volunteers in the city that are working hard on different committees that are really have a heart to this city and want to see this city grow and become a great city in this valley. So um, uh, for me, I'm having a great time and um, I just enjoy working with everybody. Thank you. And Mayor Zwollin, what do you enjoy most about being the mayor? What I enjoy most is it's for me, it's always about relationships, always about relationships. 
it just is in every part of my life. And um, I love meeting people as uh, my fellow council members have said. The, and the thing that's interesting about this role is um, lest we sound like everything is just all beautiful and, and filled with love and relationships or whatever, really what, what I do every day is listen to people's complaints and their problems and then help them find ways to solve them. But the thing that is so inspiring and engaging is, that, is to be able to help people get resources to the city um, with, in ways that they might be completely unfamiliar with. And, um, you know, my, my relationship with our city manager, Joe Lopez, is such that, you know, the problems come to me, but they get sent to him. And he, he never seems overwhelmed with dealing with them. And I, and I always think that it's not just me, it's six other council members also. But we are all doing everything possible to address the problems that we have in our community and find ways to solve them. And there's just nothing that I enjoy more than, than solving issues that our cities um, and residents in our city are, are facing. So I enjoy working with so many people that are committed to making this the best place it can be and are really doing something every day to make that happen. That really drives me to be here and to actually be doing something. And it was mentioned before about not just complaining. So this is a role I, I signed up for and jumped into to actually um, do something about it, not just sit back and complain. It's very easy to do that on social media and make comments on articles and things that people read. It's another, it's another level to, to actually dive in and try to do something to solve those problems. And as I mentioned before, many people in our community do, but the best thing about it all is the relationships that we have to make it happen. Thank you. All right, for the last question, maybe the best question of all, um, and that is, could you share an interesting or even fun fact about yourself? And uh, Council Member Escusia Brayton, you're up first. Thank you. And thank you for saying my last name correctly. I'm sure it wasn't easy at first. <laughs> um, you know, my go-to response immediately was is to say that I am a enjoy cooking. I'm a I'm an avid and, and, and cook. Um, I have three hungry boys at home that like eating and I like cooking, but that's kind of boring. So um, what I will say is a fun fact about myself is that I'm a graduate at the FBI Academy, the Federal Bureau of Investigations, and that's kind of cool. And um, I've completed, it was a special course that the FBI has. It was a course put together for private citizens after the wake of 9-11. They felt it was necessary to build a, a course that supported local leaders understanding the FBI and being able to explain the work of the, the work that they do to their constituency base. So, anyways, I'm I, I'm a graduate and I learned all the cool things that FBI agents do and um, how to effectively fire a firearm, how to effectively lift fingerprints from a crime scene. Um, uh, just a variety of cool FBI stuff. So, yeah, that's it. That is interesting. Um, Council Member Ricky had to leave for another meeting, but uh, so Council Member Knoyer, share an interesting, fun fact about yourself. Wow, well, I cannot follow that. I have no nothing that even comes close to um Jenny your daily daily <laughs> life is amazing you have no interesting fact you are the interesting fact you're walking you're an amazing human being well yeah but the, the thing you know uh well if I look back on uh you know, interesting things about my life. The interesting things about my life is that I started out in the wrong side of town, on the west side of Modesto, uh, very poor, um, did, went to college as a nurse, but had no 
political science, nothing like that. And that here I ended up being on the Modesto City Council for eight going on nine years. I think that's an interesting fact in itself. Is that you can start off of a building? Uh, well, yeah, I jump off of what that's, you know, that's something else. But and how old were you? Fact that, the <laughs> fact that you, the fact like me that I started out, you know, poor, not knowing I was poor because I had great parents that didn't let me know I was poor uh, and not ha having a political background, but ending up because of things that just happened in my life to be on the city council, which is the biggest honor that this city has given me, that they have elected me twice and given me that responsibility. Um, and the fact it's at my age, um, you know, I'm 78 years old when I won my first election. That's kind of unique. Um, and, you know, finishing it now. So I, I just think the fact that I started out like an average everyday person and ended up being on a city council, I think to me is pretty interesting and pretty unique. Thank you, Council Member Knoyer. I, I thought you might trot out the old fact that you were the first female cheerleader of Modesto High. I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. Well, no, you know, the thing is, there. yeah, I was the first cheerleader of Modesto High. Uh, I, I was looking back on things, uh, you know, years ago, before I even thought about running for office, uh, I was telling Jose uh, Sanchez that, 11, 10 years ago, I had applied to be on the, uh, the redistricting and they never got back to me. So I guess in a way, even though I never was politically educated in that way, I must have always felt like there was something I needed to do because I, that wasn't the only thing I applied for. So it's interesting. Yes, I was the first girl yell leader. I got the canals fence. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that I did, um, but I just think the fact that I started out as this wrong side of the town uh, ending up on city council is uh, quite remarkable. Thank you. Council member uh, David Wright also had uh, a meeting at one o'clock. And so the mayor, share an interesting or fun fact about yourself. All right, I'll just share a brief little story again. Uh, when I was 13 years old, I, and many of you probably already heard this story, but I uh, walked by myself to the train station on 9th and J Street, just right behind me here. And this was on Memorial Day in 1968. And it was when Bobby Kennedy was uh, making his way down the valley on a whistle stop tour as he was running. Uh, it was a California primary and he was running for president of the United States. Uh, I remember his wife Ethel was with him in a yellow dress by his side. She was pregnant with their 11th child at that time. And as um, we know, he was uh, shot and killed six days later. So this, this, um, shaped my life in many ways, uh, that experience that I was um, inspired or motivated to go and to be there and be able to, I shook his hand three times, the crowd shifted and I was about to be trampled on and he tried to climb out of the back of the train to help me up. And uh, I'll just never forget that experience, the look in his eye and the hand reaching down to help a 13 year old girl um, from getting crushed. So. Uh, that's just a one little experience that I've had, but it was um, hugely impactful in my life. Thanks so much. Okay, Mayor Zwollen, uh, we're gonna hand it over to you for any wrap up or closing thoughts you may have, and then you can feel free to adjourn your meeting. Okay, thank you very much. I'll just um, end by saying what a privilege it really was to participate um, and to be able to serve the residents of Modesto. 
and to serve with the members of our city council. Uh, as, as we all know, cities are in many ways the most important form of government when it comes to the ability to impact people's lives. And um, we take that very seriously. Uh, we uh, are committed first and foremost to making a city that we can all be proud of. And please reach out at any time uh, if you have concerns that you would like to share with us, uh, challenges, we're, we're ready to take them on. And I think that it's been really great for us today and hopefully informative and engaging for the public. And thank you so much again for this opportunity. And I will consider this meeting and call this meeting of the city council to be adjourned. Thank you so much. And thank you all that uh, attended with us today and uh, listened in. We had a great turnout of attendees throughout our community. Greatly appreciate the time of each of you today um, and partnering with us on this um, is greatly appreciated. Michael, is there anything you'd like to add? There is not. Thank you everyone for your support. Much appreciated. And Thank you, everyone. Take care. Have a great day. Be well. Bye, you you Thank too. You. Bye.